Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, Scalable Lab Automation, Two Open Platforms from Pico Leader to High Throughput Technologies, presented by Hal Weirenberg, Head of Product Management at TCON, and Manuel Bauer, Market Manager at TCON. I'm Susie Valdez of LabRoots, and I will be your moderator for today's event. We are excited to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots, the leading scientific social networking website, and also sponsored by TCON. TCON is a leading global provider of automated laboratory instruments and solutions. To learn more about TCON, visit www.tcon.com. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that this presentation is interactive. We want to hear from you, so questions, comments can be submitted via the green Q&A button at the lower left of your screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of our presentation. Also, you are viewing this presentation in the slide window. To enlarge the window, click on the icon in the lower right-hand corner of the slide window. If you cannot hear or see this presentation properly, let us know by clicking on the support button at the top right or the Q&A button and let us know that you're having a problem. I will now turn our presentation over to these fine gentlemen, Hal Warrenberg and Manuel Bauer. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for the nice introduction. Um, my name is Manuel Bauer. I have the start, and I'll be talking about um, our D300E, our digital dispenser. And during the presentation, I'll um, tell you what digital dispensing means and how it can help you to enhance your workflows. So I'll start off with an introduction, what digital dispensing is, then how digital dispensing can sol help you solve challenges with low volume dispensing and assay miniaturization, um, how the D300E digital dispenser can help you with that, and then walk you through some example data and then the software wizards, and end with a summary before I then hand over to Hal for the second part of the presentation. So the D300E is a small desktop instrument, a dispenser, which allows you to dispense any volume into any well in any assay plate quickly, easily, and automatically. You just have to add your liquid to the dispenser and let the instrument do the rest. So the applications we see for the D300 is in proteomics, then also in biomolecule drug discovery, in genomics for miniaturized qPCR setup, in enzymology, also in small molecule drug discovery, and um, many others, as you'll see later on. So the, the technology behind the D300E is based on the thermal inkjet technology from Hewlett Packard. So Hewlett Packard has led the development of inkjet technology for the past 20 years. And um, what they do is they reliably dispense picoliter liter droplets of ink in printers billions of times per day. What the D300E now does, it, it uses this material improvement technology and uh, applies it now for life science research. So here you can see the, the dispenser in the upper right-hand corner. And, and then on the right side, you see the dispenser cassettes. We have T8 plus cassettes for um, smaller volumes. So the smallest volume is 11 picoliters. And then the D4 plus cassettes for higher volumes, um, especially if you want to do then um, normalizations or backfills with uh, your solvent. Here you just see an enlargement of a dispenser. So in this uh, tiny little cup, and let me highlight that for you, in, in this tiny little cup, you will put your fluid in, and then is the bottom view, and from these um, non-visible 22 dispense head nozzles, the fluid will then be dispensed into the plate underneath, as you can see. And if I um, now move to uh, then the next uh, the next slide you can see here, this is just an enlarged view of the dispensed nozzles, and you can see a tiny drop just dispensed from there, uh, from, from the dispense head. Now, how are these volumes built up? So why is it digital dispensing? Because we have a certain amount of fluid that we can dispense. So in that case, you will see two tiny droplets of 20 picoliters each. So this makes up 40 picoliters in volume here. And for the 320 picoliters, this means 16 droplets of um, 20 picoliters and so on. And you can go up to, as you see here, 5 microliters or up to 10 microliters of dispense volume with the D300E. 
Um, now if we uh, look at this one, there's a small video going to play that shows how the um, workflow is with the D300E, so how the fluid is put into the dispense head and then how the dispensing is subsequently happening into the assay plate underneath it. So if you could please play the video. So as you can see, if the um, dispense head which is used is highlighted by a blue light so that it's easy to find and easy to know where to put your fluid in. So where are the application areas we see it? So in, in proteomics or biomolecular discovery, um, you can use it to do dose response curves preparation to ev evaluate new biologics, for example. In uh, genomics, you can use it for assay setup, qPCR setup, and to dispense the mass mix and nucleic acids. Um, in entomology, where you can independently titrate enzymes, substrates, and inhibitors. And uh, the, the biggest application area, small molecule drug, drug discovery, be it add me or mass spec to add um, calibration standards in cell-based assays to do dose response experiments right in your assay plate, or in biochemical assays to also do your uh, dose response setup right in the assay plate, or in other biochemical assays wherever there is low volume dispensing of compounds um, in, for example, synergy experiments. And we also have applications in cosmetics where, there is, um, where it's used for dose response setup for active testing. So the D300E helps you to eliminate existing challenges with repetitive manual pipetting and traditional titration methods, um, especially as it eliminates time consuming and costly labor. And also in process, it eliminates process-related problems like delays and uh, personal handovers which are required. Um, there is a substantial waste of precious samples uh, up to 95% as I later on show, and plates, disposable tips, the luins, also complexity, so therefore there's a high level of expertise required. And um, there's also industry-wide sanitization limitations and repetitive stress injury with laboratory personnel. So how is this now avoided? You see that the titration planning, and I'll walk you through the software wizards later on, um, can, can be much reduced the time used for that. And also the compound titration, as you do not have to do a serial dilution anymore because you can just dispense the required concentration into, right into the well of your assay plate. So what are the risks? Um, that come with uh, challenging pipetting patterns. So it can be pipetting errors, carryover errors, or um, edge effects in the plate, and I'll um, talk later on how we can reduce these. Also in flexibility, there is a trade-off um, between scientifically desired versus convenient to process. Also, so oftentimes there are specific doses required, and um, drug-drug interactions are very difficult to pipette by hand. Then also the layout often depends on the pipetting device, what you're able to achieve with that. And complex assay profiles are difficult to set up manually. Everybody who um, ever pipetted a synergy assay by hand can certainly appreciate that. And oftentimes there's no instant access to scheduling or so the availability of personal instrumentation. So if we look at an example workflow on how the D300E can help to streamline a manual process. If we look at how a um, classical titration experiment or dose response experiment would be done is you start with your assay setup where you have to do your drug formatting, your plate prep, the diluent addition, your serial dilution, then you tape untape because you have to shake or spin down and then probably have to do an intermediate dilution in media or um, aqueous buffer. You have to do bio, uh, daughter replicates, and then finally you can arrive at your bioassay with uh, your titration series. All these steps in the middle, all the blue steps, they can actually be combined into one by using the D300E, by dispensing your um, disp dose, response curve, dose response curve right into your assay plate. 
So how does it compare to manual or even automated pipetting? So what we have plotted here are um, the IC50s that have been either dispensed um, by um, the D300 on the upward axis or um, manually or on the right side here, again, upwards dipped and done by the D300E or on the right side done by an automated pipetter. And you see that the IC50 is determined by either the D300E or by the um, respective other method, they nicely overlap. So it leads to equivalent results as a proof of concept. However, what it leads to is um, here is the plot of um, that same results that you've seen previously, but now just the standard deviations plotted. Um, on the right side, you see um, plotted the standard deviations of the auto pipetter. And um, on the upward axis, you see the standard deviations that you achieve with the D300E. So the median standard degree deviation we get with an auto pipetter is around 0.18, whereas um, with the D300E we can get a two-fold improvement in standard deviation. So that means we have a better reproducibility and a better data quality. Um, everyone doing cell-based assays is well aware of the effect that you get towards the edges on your plate. So on the outside wells and columns of your uh, rows and columns of your plate, you often have a higher evaporation or a different thermal transfer, and therefore the results from these wells can deviate to what you will see um, in in the wells that are more on the inner compartment of the plate. With the D300E, you can randomize the entire plate layout just with the click of a button. So the upper uh, layout you would be fairly easily able to achieve by manual pipetting, but if you look at the lower one, this just becomes an impossible or very lengthy task to, to pipette. And what that leads to is we have um, here a comparison on the left side between the non-randomized layout, so the conventional layout, and we see um, a strong drop-off of the results towards the higher concentrations, where on the right side, if you look at a randomized um, dispensing, we see that we get a not much nicer distribution of our um, data points and then um, therefore also have a much better data quality. And of course, we also have something to help you analyze it and um, so to de-randomize your data. So there's a small software um, tool which is called Data Merge, where you just copy paste your reader data or you load your reader data and combine it with um, the dispense report, which then puts your reader data nicely back into order such that you have no headaches in, in analyzing it. Um, also, how you could increase the quality of data is, um, if you look now at the, at the left side, for example, this is how um, dilution series are oftentimes um, performed. So in like triplicates of an eight point dilution curve, and you see how the um, the data points are spread out over the curve and what the um, IC50, the determined IC50 is. But so the three times eight points, these 24 points, you could also spread out all along your, um, like with the concentration series, which would lead to a much nicer result. However, if you just take only 16 points and spread them out nicely over the um, whole concentration range, you see that you can save a third of your wells and even there get nicer data and uh, better data quality. So what that leads to is that it can help you to save on your precious compounds and reagents. So this is real data from a customer um, that serves internal customers. So just for your reference here on the left side, this refers to customer one to four. And they have been performing like 11 point titrations in triplicates or eight point titration in duplicates, nine point du um, duplicates or 11 point in triplicates. And um, in the next column, you see how much of uh, compound they've been using in their traditional setup and it was somewhere between 15 and 60 microliters. However, if they switched over to the D300E, they could save up to 90% of their compound just by um, avoiding pre-dilutions and by making uh, more efficient use of uh, their assay plates. So let me now um, show you a couple of the software functions that we have in the D300E control software. Um, 
everybody claims that their software is uh, easy to use and intuitive, but um, the D300E software allows you to copy-paste um, already existing uh, essay setups that you have in Excel right into the software and run it from there, so you will get started in no time with the experiments. Uh, what you see here is also a um, color representation of um, a couple of different possibilities of dilution series, of a randomized dilution series, also of a synergy experiment, so a drug-drug interaction study. You can have duplicates. The black fill of the wells indicates that it has been normalized or backfilled with the diluent to make sure that you're not looking at an effect of DMSO or whatever uh, diluent you have in your, um, or whatever uh, diluent you have a compound dissolved in. Also, if you add control wells or um, have replicates of your experiments. Okay, let me show you a couple of the software wizards, and um, I'll walk you through with a couple of screenshots. So let me start off with the enzyme profile wizard. So what this allows you is to easily set up complex assays, and it's a guided step-by-step um, through the wizard. So in the first step, you will uh, define what your enzyme is, what your substrate is, and if you have inhibitors yet, you want to test with a substrate. In the second step is um, you, you define how you want to have it laid out over the plate. And then in the third step is a just a control overview of how your compound, um, your substrate, and your enzyme is distributed over your assay plate. So here, just as an enlargement. So in, in red, you can see the, um, the enzyme, in green, the substrate, and in blue or in yellow, you can see the inhibitor, which is added in different concentrations to the enzyme profile um, experiment. So like this, it's easy to set up um, even complex assays. So be it characterizations, like enzyme titrations, michaelis menten kinetic analysis, so where you have a substrate titration with a fixed enzyme concentration, um, or also where you have an inhibition like an inhibitor and substrate um, titration where you can create line view Berg plots. So what we see here, um, first of all, in the beginning I mentioned that we are doing um, thermal inkjet technology, so sometimes people might be concerned that something happens to their enzyme because of the heating that occurs, the very transient one. But here there is a PKA1, um, a comparison both between um, the blue line um, with the D300 and the red line with manual, so a um, basically a signal concentration ratio, and you see that in both cases also for the um, map kinase up here, um, that both the manually um, dispensed one and also the one dispensed by the D300E, there is no measurable activity lost due to the use of the D300. What we see here is um, um, HDAC enzyme uh, um, activity assay. So the enzyme kinetics were evaluated by dispensing a fixed concentration of a substrate and the titration of the enzyme. And then the um, KM value was um, determined by titrating the substrate in the presence of a fixed concentration of the enzyme. And the D300 was used to dispense both the enzyme and the substrate in aqueous solution using 0.1% um, bridge 35 added to both stocks. So we have to add a certain amount of uh, detergent, so 0.1% of bridge 35 or Triton X100 or 0.3% of Twin 20 to our aqueous stock solutions because the very small dispenser nozzles we have Otherwise, the aqueous solution, because of the surface tension, would not even enter these dispensed nozzles. So what, that's why we have to take off the surface tension by adding a certain amount of um, surfactant to it. And um, this is customer data, and um, this is the voice. Uh, this is what the customer told us, is that the KM is spot on with our previous data. However, I was able to get set up the assay in less than 15 minutes compared to a whole afternoon previously, um, and that overall the HDAC assay turned out very well. So this is now an example of where the substrate and an inhibitor was dispensed to the um, enzyme. So the D300 was used to titrate both the substrate in aqueous buffer with a surfactant and an inhibitor, like a small molecule in, in DMSO, to create line with Berg plots and to determine the inhibition mode. So, and what you can see here in the upper part is um, uh, the, a, a mixed-mode inhibition, 
of an inhibitor or a non-competitive inhibition of, of the inhibitor that was titrated with um, the assay. And also here the customer said that it was successful with substrate inhibitor dispensing in synergy experiments, which are hard to accomplish using other techniques, and that is extremely useful competitive mechanism determination in enzymology. Um, with the so let me come to the next result, the, the PCR result, because we see that also in um, PCR setups, uh, customers want to miniaturize the assay more and more, both to save on the um, on the sample side and also to save, of course, on the expensive reagents like the master mix is used in, in the setup. So here you see a screenshot of the PCR wizard. On the left side, you define what your master mixes are. The middle column is where you define your primer pairs. And then on the right side, you define which your samples are. Then the next step, um, you will add, um, you will enter what the volume is that you want to add of your master mixes, um, the volume that you want to add of your primers, or you can also add the concentration there, and then the volume to be added from the sample. And if you confirm that, you get to the next screen where you can define a standard curve, so which primers and uh, which standard or which sample you want to have for your standard curve. Again, there are how many titration levels you want um, and what the spreading is. So in that case, it's the half log, uh, one by two dilution. And you can select how you want to have the layout in the plate. If you have, want to have it by columns and where you want to ha uh, have your your standard curve dispensed, which is here in gray. So what we show here is um, also there we wanted to have a comparison how well it compares to a manual pipetting. So in gray, we have manual uh, results from a manual ex manually set up experiment, both in 12.5 microliter reaction vo volume or 5 microliter reaction volume. And again, here you can see that the, the red and the, or the orange and the gray lines, they nicely um, are aligned. So that means that there is no difference whether you set your experiment up <clears throat> with a D300E or um, manually. So there's no activity loss in your master mix or some other effects to your um, experiment. However, what this shows, this is um, a workflow from a customer. I won't go through it into detail. Um, what this means is uh, they start off with uh, zebrafish embryos that they pool um, from similar test conditions, and they go through all the steps of um, uh, isolating the RNA, then creating the cDNA, and then um, measure and determine the amount of cDNA and use the cDNA then to do a qPCR. What they did with the D300E is they eliminated a couple of these steps. So they went from the, D from the RNA right to the real-time PCR. And with that, they could achieve tremendous savings. So um, as we are talking about um, animal embryos, so they had in their manual 25 microliter two-step process, they needed eight embryos, and they needed only one embryo to do it with the D300E, so that's an eight uh, time saving. Especially on the RNA side, they needed more than two micrograms for their uh, manual setup, whereas they just needed 0 0.1 microgram, uh, 0 0.01 microgram with the D300E. From the supermix and from the master mix, they also needed tremendous, uh, or a, a lot less, and um, also from the primers they could save, and the entire workflow time was cut into half. So if you look in what that means by um, in monetary values, because of course the dispense heads, they don't come for free. But even if you take into account um, the price of the dispense heads, um, you see that in the end, there's a total saving of up to 30% um, in total materials and labor. So, and five microliters is, of course, not the smallest that it can achieve in, in volume. We have here a comparison how reactions set up in five microliters, three microliters, and two microliters, all set up by the D300E, how they compare to each other. And so the blue bars are the two microliter reactions, the orange ones, the three microliter ones, the uh, gray bars, the five microliter reactions, and um, the yellow bars are where the master mix and the cDNA was already premixed and also set up in a five microliter reaction. And you see that there's virtually no difference 
in the results. So you can easily scale down your experiments to two microliters reaction volume without any loss in fidelity and without any um, problems with your data quality. So let me come to uh, the, an, another wizard, a, the, the Synergy wizard, which is very e which makes it very easy to create um, play designs for drug-drug interaction or Synergy experiments. And um, it makes it also easy to create Synergy sequences because of the non-contact digital dispensing. So um, how the Synergy wizard um, how the Synergy wizard works is you define uh, your um, one um, target compound and then how this should be combined with all the other uh, compounds that you have in your list. So in that case, we have six drug-drug combinations out of the four um, drugs here on the left side. So this is again um, the, a, a real-world example from a customer of ours. Um, they are um, assessing uh, cancer samples. And um, in, in one experimental uh, setup, they look at 30 samples. And each of these samples will be distributed to 296 well plates. So that makes a total of 60 plates, which makes a, another total of 5,760 wells to treat. They treat the, um, the samples with a vehicle control. Um, and then they have 10 investigational compounds, whereas seven they do with individual dose responses. And then they have three dual drug combinations, and all of these are seven-point dose responses. So this is how such an experimental setup could look like. So we have the, um, the seven-point dose responses. So the seventh is always the empty point. Um, and then we have the, the three combinations, which is basically are tested against each other. So here we have A and B, A and C, and B against C. So um, everybody able to handle a pipette could set something like this up, but it will take them quite some time. And how much time it takes even experienced pipetters, we will see in the next slide. So the entire setup time um, for including the calculations and preparing the pre-dilutions in manual works, it was uh, three and a half hours, whereas with the D300E, it was just 15 minutes. And if you want to see how easily this can be set up with the D300E, just um, contact us and we'll be happy to give you an online demo of our software. Um, the treatment time for the 60 plates, so the single and the combination additions and also the vehicle backfill, and this is no, no joke, this really took 26 hours. So it was really three people working an entire day to treat all these 60 plates um, reliably with these compounds. For the D300E, it just took two and a half hours of pipetting time. So the entire time savings is actually three and a half, nearly three and a half full-time equivalents. Also, the, uh, the amount of the different compounds needed um, was reduced from 68 microliters to 36 microliters. That might not uh, seem a lot, but as we are talking about investigational compounds, they are very precious. So on the compound side, they could save 47%. Um, also not to underestimate is how much of the hazardous chemical waste you can save. So they had in total 238 tubes, 238 20 milliliter tubes from, from the pre-dilutions, um, whereas in the end they just had the 10 investigational compounds with uh, seven, seven microliters in it wasted. So that's a quite significant waste reduction. Also the accuracy improvement um, is like threefold. So that's a... Um, I think a, a clear statement why to let uh, complex assays rather be performed by some automation. So to sum up the, um, the benefits that we have for the D300E, we have time savings that, and also a gain of confidence and accuracy. We can dispense any dose in any well directly into the assay plate. So even with cells in it or with your um, biochemical reaction in it, there is virtually no cross-contamination risk as we do non-contact dispensing and the dispense heads are single use. And there is an extended working range from microliters to tens of picoliters. Um, direct titration, tipless, you don't need any dilution. Also simplified setup of PCR reactions and enzyme profile experiments become possible. Randomizing sample leads to decreased edge effect, decreased edge effects, and that's also just one click of a button. Targeted dosing, um, I didn't talk about that one, but we're happy to show you that in the um, in the software demo. Um, also leads to less error in standard uh, in, in, in IC50 values, and um, accurate drug drug titrations are um, made possible and um, simplified. 
So um, also we have an improved accuracy between versus manual or automated pipetting based on uh, the dilutions. We have better hill slopes um, compared to manual or automated pipetting. We avoid localized concentration peaks by optional shaking of the destination plate during the dispense. So during the dispense, um, you can make the D300E shake your plate such that the DMSO or the uh, diluent added is dissolved in the plate. Prior to the um, dispensing, there's a removal of the electrostatic effects in the destination plate, so there's a deionizer. Um, you have cost savings, there's no plate or tip disposals for dilutions necessary, and um, not to forget the convenient software for the calculation of volumes or concentrations, and that guides the user step-by-step -step through the process, as you can see in the video. And uh, we can, we are happy to send you references where um, customers talked about in, in our Tekken journal what they did with the, with the instrument. Um, so just contact us if you want to have um, more details on these different articles from our uh, Tekken journal. And uh, this just leads me to end with one question, which is, are you still hand pipetting or are you bioprinting already? And um, with that, I want to hand over to Hal Werenberg, who will um, be talking about our Fluent um, Automation Solution. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, so, my name is Hal Werenberg, and uh, I'm the Head of Product Management here at TCAN, and I'm very excited to be telling you about the other end, the high throughput portion of this talk, the laboratory automation solution that we have named the Fluent. Uh, TCAN actually has a wide range of platforms, the Freedom Evo, uh, all the way up to the Fluent 1080. I'm going to focus primarily on the Fluent itself right now because this is the new one. Uh, this has got some of the latest features that we have, um, but it's built on the pillars here of simplicity, productivity, and confidence. So. Let's jump right in. The Fluent comes in three flavors. There is the small, medium, and large, the Fluent 480, 780, and 1080, if you will. The difference is primarily the sizes of these instruments. So the 1080 itself uh, is this one here. This is the big one. It can be benchtop or cabinet mounted. It can have up to three arms in any order, and I'll talk about the arms here in a moment. Uh, it's got the largest system and the highest deck capacity. So it's got 72 deck grids, and you'll see a little bit more what I mean by deck grids. And that allows us to have up to 72 plate positions. We can actually have many, many more plates than that on the work table, but I'll talk about that as well. The Fluent 780, this is the medium. This one is already showing you some of the extensibility options we have. So this one is set up as an example of a high throughput cell-based assay or even a medium throughput cell-based assay. On the right-hand side of the Fluent, we have actually a carousel and a incubator. So the incubator is here, the carousel is up here, and we're even hiding a washer and a reader inside the optional cabinet that we are on top of right here. So this is a really compact footprint even though we can have up to three arms. So this does have our flexible channel arm, our multiple channel arm, and our robotic gripper arm. Um, the next one is the Fluent 480. This is the TWI instrument, the cute one, the small one, the uh, incredibly compact and productive one for its footprint. Uh, this one can hold up to 30 microplates, 30 plate positions on the work table. One of the bigger differences here is this is the uh, it only can have up to two arms. So all of these systems can have one arm or two arms. The 780 and the 1080 can have three arms. Pictured here is the HEPA hood on top. All of these instruments, we do have a uh, HEPA hood option, so you can have clean air blown onto your system. Uh, so the Fluent platform actually is ready for all types of assays. When we launched this, we really wanted to make sure that we were targeting very specific application areas, and we started with cell-based assays, and so clean air was important for that. We've done drug discovery, we're in genomics, we've actually done all kinds of stuff with the Fluent now, and it's really ready for almost anything your lab is ready to, wants to do. The one thing I haven't talked about, which has been present on every single one of these pictures, is actually the little touch screen here. So as you'll see, the hardware on the Fluent is a very sophisticated machine with lots of power, but we wanted to make sure that it was always easy to use. And I think a really good example of this combination of capacity, speed, and ease of use is represented here 
by our Fluent ID. We're going to play a video in just a moment, and what you will see is uh, a quick loading interface. So the operator will start by the touch screen. She will load the tubes onto the work table, and we're going to get 96 tubes and three grids. And when, the, when she's done loading, she presses Continue, and we're ready for the assay to go. So let's go ahead and start that video. Okay, so one of the sneaky things in that video as well was right on the work table, we even have little lights to indicate as the tubes are being read if they were successfully read or not. So it takes no more time to put the tubes on the work table than it does to also identify every single one of them. So really, when she pressed continue at the end, we were ready to start pipetting and start the assay. So you see here a really simple interface with touchscreen guidance, uh, but you also see a highly productive system that's very fast. So this is kind of the, the baked into the DNA of everything fluent. Uh, one of the next things to show off here is the arms themselves. Uh, so you'll see here on the work table we are six plates deep. This is part of what pulls off our incredi incredible deck capacity. The instrument still fits through a standard doorway so we can get into your lab. Uh, but we also have up to 32 tubes in a single position. Uh, really, you're not going to find a system for this footprint that has higher capacity than the Fluent. Um, the flexible channel arm allows us to pipette from any of those plates or any of those tubes uh, across the work table. And we have two flavors of the flexible channel arm. Pictured here is the air flexible channel arm. And in a moment, I'm going to show you the other one, and I challenge you to spot the difference. Uh, some of the primary features of both of these arms are that the tips can spread out to reach into tubes. Uh, the flexible channel arm works primarily with disposable tips. We have a tip eject system so that we can uh, eject directly into a waste chute. Um, we also have the ability to work with nested tips. So as I was saying before that we have plate positions, 72 on the 1080 plate positions, we can actually put a stack of tips there. So in a single plate position, we can have five layers of nested tips, each layer with 96 tips. And all of a sudden, in a single segment, you can start holding thousands of tips so that you make sure you're not, uh, you have enough disposable tips to pipette your samples and really protect against cross contaminations. Um, the other arm that we have is the liquid flexible channel arm. So I mentioned these two arms look very similar. The liquid flexible channel arm also can use disposable tips, or it can have these standard uh, fixed tips, which are washable. Or we can mix and match on the liquid flexible channel arm. So we can have fixed tips that are washable. We can work with disposable tips, any combination you need. The flexible channel arms are capable of pipetting down to half a microliter and one microliter in free dispense up to a full mil. The liquid flexible channel arm can go as low as 200 nanoliters when doing contact dispensing with our low volume tips. And if you use our large syringes, you can pipe that all the way up to 5 ml. So we can really do a wide range of assays here. Now, just to point it out, when Manuel was talking, he got to use the word picoliter. Uh, we're not quite that low as the uh, HP-enabled uh, technology, but this is really remarkable. This dynamic range on a single system is market leading. These two arms can be put together on a single system. So on the 1080s and the 780s, you can have two flexible channel arms with 16 channels. So if you were doing a lot of cherry picking, work listing, hit picking, whatever these words may be that you use, these arms can spread out across the work table, aspirate all your wells of interest, and dispense it into an assay-ready plate at the end. Or if you were doing something like normalization, where you needed each channel to be dealing with independent different volumes, that's the other thing the flexible channel arm does incredibly well, is each of these arms can spread out, move up and down in Z on its own, do its liquid level detection, and aspirate and pipette an independently different volume all at the same time. So workflows like normalization, amazing. And we can even do traditional uh, serial dilutions here as well. So if you needed to work that into your assay, we have no problem. This arm is great at that. The next arm, the multiple channel arm. 
This one has a nice little video to show you. This is the flexible adapter exchange. This arm has 384 channels in the head, but the video will show you is how quickly we can switch between 384 tips and 96 tips. Let's go ahead and start this video. Um, Okay, so that wasn't the video that was only showing the fast exchange. That video showed you a little bit more. I actually stole my own thunder there. Uh, that arm showed off all three arms working in parallel, including the robotic gripper arm, and I'll get to that in a moment. But what you can see in this picture here is the flexible adapter uh, exchange. So the MCA384 has this adapter mounted. It can swoop down in a single motion, switch to uh, grab these tips over here. We actually can deal with uh, multiple different sizes of tips and different types of adapters. We have the ability to deal with fixed washable tips, disposable tips. We can work in 96 tip formats, 384 tip formats. We have a pipetting range of 250 nanoliters all the way up to 500 microliters. And, but wait, there's more. We have row and column functions. This means that not only do we deal with pipetting entire uh, plates from one to another. If we were doing reagent distribution of 96 wells all at once or copying a mother plate to several daughter plates, um, we also can use this and pick up a single column, a single row, and pipette serial dilutions with this, or pipette just the controls in a single column. Uh, this is a really remarkably powerful arm. The uh, next arm here, which you also saw in that video a moment ago, is the robotic gripper arm. Um, this arm here kind of speaks for itself. This allows us to do all kinds of things. We can switch fingers and deal with plates or tubes or uh, actually reach through the work table and load a centrifuge from the top. This arm is my personal favorite arm, actually, and it doesn't, doesn't need many slides to describe exactly what it can do. Uh, I think I actually might want to show that video one more time here of all three arms working together and just point out one or two more things for you to show. Um, or to take a look at as we do this. The robotic gripper arm on the right will be picking up fingers, and this is kind of like a, a, a dissolution workflow, a couple steps in a dissolution workflow. You'll see the robotic gripper arm pick up fingers, manipulate a tube, scan it, weigh it, bring it back, and then we will pipette system fluid into it with our liquid-filled flexible channel arm. And then the MCA arm will be adding diluent to the plate all at once. And if you watch closely for the MCA, you will see it come forward and pick up a head adapter with all 96 tips mounted at once. Um, so let's go ahead and take one more look at that video, and you'll see all of this together.
Okay. Uh, thank you for indulging me and in letting you show that video twice. Um, the robotic gripper arm, just to say it out loud, doesn't have to use the finger exchange option. That is, uh, we also have the ability to deal with fixed fingers that are permanently mounted to the head. So if you only need to use one of those types of fingers, we would just screw that on and that's all you would have. The system is not only really flexible in terms of what the arms can do, it actually has a really flexible work table concept here. What you see here in this picture is the operator actually lifting a work table segment out. So each one of these points can be changed on the work table. In this picture, with all the arms all together, there's some places for plates, there's some places for tubes, there's even a hole right in the middle of the work table that we accomplished by removing one of the carriers. This makes the vertical integration on Affluent phenomenally easy and actually really cheap in comparison to competitive options out there. Uh, this work table does have a patent on it. We call it our dynamic deck, and it makes the system just wildly flexible. So if, if, you're, if your needs change in 12 months and you need to do different assays with different carriers, we can actually do that with this work table very easily. So it protects your inve investment very strongly. Uh, one of our longtime Fluent customers actually was telling me recently that the flexibility of the system is actually more important to him than the speed and the easy usability. He said the flexibility of the system is what allows him to keep the assays that he wants to do in-house because he can be faster and adapt his workflows than it would be to try and have a CRO take on some of his workflows or anything like that. The flexibility ensures that he has redundancy between his systems and that when he needs to bring on a new assay, he can do it very fast. So the dynamic work table is also very, very configurable. So you have different types of arms. You can mount these arms all together on the same system. You can change the work table however you need, and the system can become very sophisticated very quickly. All of that said, we thought it was wildly important to keep it simple. We wanted to make sure that at the forefront of this uh, entire system, this entire platform, was the operator. So we have an intuitive touch interface. I hate when software people give you a pitch about intuitive software, but I think it's true for us, so I decided why not, we'll put the word on the screen. Take a look at these screens here. That I don't have to tell you anything for you to understand what to do on any of these screens. And actually, just to point it out, on the right-hand side, that's completely customizable content as well. You can show pictures and give text to your operators right on that touch screen, customized to every single run. You can take out a picture, uh, your cell phone, take out a picture and put it on here. I like to tell my sales guys, this is easier and faster to set up than a PowerPoint slide. Uh, so this interface is phenomenally important. It's the type of thing the operators will be using every single day. Again, more examples that I don't need to explain to you. You can figure out which one is the login screen. You can figure out which one is the uh, go button to start the run. In the middle at the bottom, that's a basic user prompt. These are all default screens. There's no extra programming to build any of this. This is what comes with Fluent Control. Now, if you are a bit of a software geek, we actually give a lot of power here for you to customize the content on the touch screen as well. You can take user inputs, you can create custom controls, you can do a lot of stuff in this. But by default, really easy to put up your own pictures. Any uh, user prompt that comes up during the run where the system needs an operator to interact, that will come up in plain text. There will be easy to click buttons. Uh, truly an, an intuitive interface. It reduces the training for new operators, and it makes it easier for you to have multiple operators working on the same system, uh, because as they are running new assays, they have a familiar interface that doesn't require uh, explanation that guides them through their runs. Now behind that is a configuration software package designed for creating the work tables and for uh, programming some steps. We'll give you a quick demonstration of it here with another video. So I'd like to get that started now. The bottom, and I'll click on that so that I can see the list of labware that I'm allowed to bring out. And we'll place a 96 well plate here, but this could be any labware. And now I'll bring out the first of our smart commands, a reagent distribution command. I can use this to transfer, say, 100 microliters from a trough on the work table, which I select by just a simple click, and then I select which well, so I could also be pipetting from tubes, for example. I select the labware, and I can even reserve wells in this target labware for things like controls or standard curves. I don't have to pipette the entire plate. We also have parameters like the number of samples that we can use to impact what happens at runtime. 
And that's it. I press go, I get a prompt to save, and Fluent Control is already preparing the script. We're actually controlling an instrument now. The Reagent Distribution command generates this script for me on the fly based on the parameters I gave it at edit time, and it can be different based on whatever user types in. We see the trough that we're pipetting from, it's generating that first set of dispense, those four wells, and then another dispense for the eight wells, and it's going to go through and fill that full plate for me. But if I had actually had an, a value in that samples field, say I had the number 12, it would only do those first two dispense steps. And therefore, every single run can be different and dynamically based on the number of samples I'm processing. Uh, and it's just one script command. It doesn't have to be different. We also have smart commands for things like the sample transfer. So with the flexible channel arm, I can pipette from hundreds of tubes to multiple plates, all with a single script line. Uh, I hope that this one minute was enough to show you why we are so excited about this command, and we hope you are too. So that was really just to try and give you a taste of what it's like to configure new assays in the software and show you some of the commands at your disposal that make everyday tasks really easy to do. But your operators, again, will be working with that touch screen. Um, Fluent Control is easy and it's powerful. So for those of you who are a bit software geeks and those of us who are have no uh, problem identifying as that, you know that it's important to be able to do what your assay needs. And Fluent Control does not actually strip back any of the power. If the hardware can do what, do what you need it to, the software can control it. Uh, the system's also something that we call teach free. What teach free means is the accuracy and precision of the hardware is so good and our patented dynamic deck it has so few tolerances and our definitions of software are so good, it means when you do the IQOQ, when we bring an instrument into your lab, we test and make sure the arms are correctly aligned, but then you can put our default carriers on your work table and you can start pipetting in a 384-well plate without even checking the definitions ahead of time. Uh, it's really an amazing system, makes it very easy to transfer scripts from one instrument to another, uh, and it makes it very fast to set up new robots in your lab. Um, the other thing that is very important for us is that anyone can modify an assay. So if you give me three bullet points to summarize Fluent Control, it's the touch-based operator interface that needs no explanation. It's just another way to call it intuitive. Teach free, building, uh, teach free makes building and sharing assays robust and fast. And finally, you saw the software in action. You know what I mean when I say anyone can create or modify an assay. When you walk back up to your system six months later and you just want to tweak something, you want to change the volume of the reagent distribution or any of that, it's going to be right there and easy for you to do. Uh, that software is what controls the laboratory automation solution known as the Fluent. Uh, it's going to help you do more in less time. These task-specific arms can work in parallel. Each arm is very fast in its own right, uh, but by working in parallel, we can get even more done faster. Uh, this is an example here of a nucleic acid purification setup. For those of you who know that workflow, you'll notice some magnetic separators in the front, 2D barcode scanner in the back, arm, uh, an arm to pipette from troughs to plates to replicate from plates. We've got all kinds of stuff on that system. Doing more in less time, so incredible deck capacity, six plates deep, nested tips on the right-hand side side of this picture over here. Uh, so we actually have thousands of tips for the flexible channel arm and uh, integration of devices through the work table. So here is a top loaded centrifuge right underneath the work table getting loaded by the robotic gripper arm, taking up no more space in your lab. Um, the arms are all dynamic. They can switch their functions. They can change tools on the fly, whatever your assay needs. We can go and grab the tool and move on. This also lets you react to new assays as the challenges and demands in your lab are adapting. The robot can grow with you. All of the arms are field upgradable. All of the carriers are field upgradable. About the only thing that's not field upgradable is switching from a 480 to a 1080. Um, but of course, we'll happily give you a second fluent whenever you want one. Um, making it easy for operators. So empowering your operators to get more tasks done daily by reducing the training and by guiding them through every assay step as they go and making that interface of such a sophisticated instrument easy to handle, you can actually have more operators doing more work on such a powerful platform. And again, the patented dynamic deck switching on demand to whatever your assays need. Uh, and finally, 
we're designed for today and ready for tomorrow. You can add new options. We integrate all kinds of third-party devices. The work table itself is very flexible. The um, 3D simulator in the bottom is going to let you also, even without monopolizing your instrument, once you get it in high productive use, you can actually program and check and look at what a new assay would uh, run like, see what those run times are and get a feel for how it works on your own computer. And then when you have the new instrument in your lab, teach free means you can export and import and have it run on the new instrument in record time. Um, I think that's everything we wanted to show. I we, we are open for a few questions here. Manuel is still sitting next to me, so for those of you who have D300 questions, he is around. Um, Wonderful. I think we, yeah, oh, happily. I was just going to say thank you so much for that informative presentation, gentlemen. And let's go ahead and get right into those questions and input from our audience. And just a reminder for all audience members um, who would like to communicate with us today, questions can be submitted via the Q&A button at the end um, and the lower left. If we are unable to get to those questions due to time constraints, Helen Manuel will reach out via email. So let's start with our first set of questions from our audience members. Looks like the first one is for you, Hel. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of barcode reading does Fluent support? Sure. Uh, so we have lots of options on barcode readers, as you probably would guess my answer is going to be. Uh, we actually can integrate a barcode scanner right onto a robotic gripper arm. We can also work with uh, standalone barcode scanners on the work table, and we can pick up plates and bring them to 2D barcode scanners or do 1D barcodes on the sides. We support all the major formats of 1D barcodes. We also integrate with third-party devices. So in the um, nucleic acid system, there was actually a Zyf 2D barcode scanner hiding in the back. And our Fluent ID scanner is a 1D barcode scanner, but this is a very open field. If you have a need, we can probably address it. I'd encourage you to talk directly to us or one of our sales engineers. Wonderful. Thank you. And let's go ahead and take another uh, question from our audience for you to Hell. Um, if everything is teach free, what about carriers or labware? Aha. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, like customizing carriers and labware. The, what I showed here was our default carriers, but we actually are really good at handling customized labware. The system even has something I didn't show it at all here due to time called zero G mode, where you can move the arms by hand, uh, and the motors actually make it feel like it's zero gravity because we counterbalance the weight of the arms. And we leave the encoders on, so we know where the arm is to within a tenth of a millimeter, and we can use that to position devices or to teach labware, custom labware, or custom carriers. So fully customizable system. Our defaults are great and teach-free, but if you need to teach, we make that pretty easy as well. Thank you so much. Actually, we have one more question directed for you. Does Fluent Control have an API? Uh, yes, so thank you, Software Geek, <laughs> whoever you are. Uh, API is a, an advanced programming interface, and yes, Fluent Control has an API. Uh, it's a fairly simple one, but you can use it to remotely start scripts and interact with the system and variables. There's a, uh, an example Excel spreadsheet delivered with Fluent Control that shows off this functionality. Um, and if you're curious, I would actually be happy to personally give a demo at some point in the future. Um, yeah. <coughs> Hell, before we switch over to some of these questions for Manuel, did you want to uh -huh. provide the audience with any closing remarks? Uh, no, other than simply saying thank you so much for giving us both a chance to uh, show off our systems. I've been working with the Fluent for six years, and uh, three of them with customers in the field, and have just been delighted with how much we've accomplished so far. And I look forward to working with any of you who are meeting the Fluent for the first time. So thank you for your time, and I will pass over to Manuel now. Thank you so much. All right, it looks like we have a, a few wonderful questions here from the audience for you, Manuel. Okay. Um, our first one is, are the cassettes single use only? Yes, they are. I mentioned that during the presentation already. Um, as we are talking about volumes down to, to 11 picoliters, we have to make sure that whenever a new fluid is put into a dispense head that it basically meet a new dispense head because if there is old fluids in it, there might be um, precipitation or there might be crystals and we would not be able to guarantee the performance down to that volume. So that's why the cassettes are single use only. Okay, thank you so much. And here's another one. 
are there problems with putting surfactants into the stock solution? Um, so this is probably from a person um, concerned about cell-based assays. So what we found is that it depends on the cell type which surfactant you use. However, as there's only 0.1% of surfactant needed in the stock solution, and we are distributing very low volumes into the assay plate, the concentration is in the assay plate is somewhere below 0.001%. Um, however, if you're working with a cell-based assay, we'd encourage you to um, try out different surfactants and um, do a titration just with this effect and to see whether your cells react to it. But so far, we haven't seen any problems with that. Great. Thank you so much. We have one more audience um, question. How do I verify if my compound was really dispensed with these small volumes? That, that's a very good one. Um, of course, we, you're, you're hardly able to see um, 11 or 13 picoliters, so that's what it makes uh, what, what makes it very hard to ver ver verify it. However, in the manufacturing process, so everybody knows that from, from his inkjet printer, so the, 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 ink, the, the dispense heads, they are made in the same factory where all the other HP print, he print heads are made. And um, before a print uh, dispense head is inserted into a cassette, each of them is individually checked so that um, it's uh, working as intended. So by adding the fluid into the dispense head, you can actually be sure that this is a working dispense head because it has been tested before it was, before it was entered. And then um, similar to what happens in your uh, desktop printer before it starts printing, there's also um, a priming step ongoing um, such that the, the dispense head is properly filled. But um, if, the, if, if you're concerned about that, um, we're happy to give you a demo, and they can see you, f um, you can see for yourself um, if that matches your expectations, and we're happy to do so. Thank you very much. Manuel, I gave Hal an opportunity to provide some closing remarks. Did you want to add a few things as well? Sure. Um, thank you for having us there, and um, I look forward to hopefully talking to a lot of you about the D300D. Great, thank you. Gentlemen, thank you so much again for your informative presentation. We want to also thank Lab Roots um, for providing this wonderful educational webcast and TCON for making it possible. Today's webcast will be available for on demand until August 2017. Keep an eye out for an email from Lab Roots alerting you when this webcast will be available for replay. We encourage you to forward that announcement to your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you next time. Goodbye now.